Hi friends, Laura here. Today I want to talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, and that's weight. Now, I want to talk about weight because the more I look around and see people who are very heavy and struggling with the quality of their life, with their happiness and their health, the more I want to do whatever I can to encourage everyone who I know, especially you guys, you're like my family, to really think about getting in shape and reducing the excess weight that you have. I, I was in Austin recently and I was looking around. We were in a bakery buying a wedding cake for my daughter's wedding. And as I looked around, I saw a lot of people who were very overweight. There was a woman there who was walking with a cane and could barely breathe. And she was struggling, really struggling. And I bet she was a lot younger than she looked. And I thought for just one thing that she could do for herself, she could change her life completely and turn it around completely. And that would be shed the excess weight that she was carrying. Now, I know it may sound easier than it appears to be in actual doing it to reduce weight, but you know what? It's not that hard. I think one of the things that we need to do, first of all, and it's something I did myself, and I'm saying this because I struggled with weight many years back, but one of the things that we need to do is kind of like reframe our attitude towards food and what food is to us. When I was in my 30s, we're talking about 31 years ago, I gained 80 pounds with my second pregnancy with Sarah Lee. Some of you know Sarah Lee. And 80 pounds is a lot of weight. I was weighing over 200 pounds at the time. And I was just, I was just not feeling good in any way about myself, about my life, about my health, about anything. I'll, yes, granted, I was having a baby, but she did not weigh 80 pounds when she was born. When she was born, I was still at about maybe 195 pounds. That's a lot of weight. Now, I wanted to get back to work. I wanted to get back on stage and I thought there's no way I can do this weighing 195 pounds. I used to love to wear my 501 Levi's that button up and I couldn't put them past, I couldn't lift them past my calves and I was just like shocked. So I made up my mind because I was so determined to reduce the weight. Now notice, I didn't say lose the weight. I say reduce the weight because we always tend to find what we lose, okay? So it's like a little mental mental tip here. So I was so determined to reduce the weight simply because I had a goal in mind and that was to get back on stage and really be the example of what I was teaching. I wanted and needed to walk my talk. So that was big for me. The other thing, of course, is because of my health and I wanted to be a good example for my children as well. So it was really, really hard for me to see myself in the mirror looking the way I did. I felt unattractive. I was, I couldn't exercise much. I couldn't do much of anything. And I was depressed. I was really, really depressed. I mean, these are not good things for your health in the least. So I, I made up my mind. I used the silver technique on how to reduce weight, which basically incorporates the mirror of the mind. I saw myself in the blue frame, the way I was and hated the way I looked and felt and especially felt about me and how how unattractive I, I felt as well. And then I pictured, I raised that image and I pictured myself in the white framed mirror of the mind, the way I wanted to be. But it was not easy to imagine myself so heavy and then at my ideal weight and size. But I did do it. But I was determined to make it a goal to reduce a certain amount of weight every single month. So for me, I picked about maybe 10 pounds in the beginning. I said, I'm going to reduce 10 pounds a month. And that seemed a little high for me. And so I eventually reduced it to five pounds. But that was okay because when I reduced it to five pounds, I thought, well, that's doable. I believe I can do that. And I started to make that a goal. And to my surprise, once I set it as a goal, and then I started to incorporate exercise as well and watch what I was eating, then the weight started to come off much faster than I, I realized. I think I reduced most of the weight. I would say like 75% of the weight I reduced in about six months. 
and I was back on track to, to lecturing. And then the other, let's say, you know, 10 pounds or so, I probably reduced it about maybe in the next maybe month, month and a half. So it went off quite fast, but not only did I reduce my intake of food, but I also added exercise to my routine. In the beginning, I have to say, it was not easy. I couldn't even walk at all, basically, but I couldn't even walk, let's say, a block without getting breathless and or to, without to losing my breath. And I really wanted to start the jogging thing, which I was not a jogger at the time. That's when I started to jog. But every day I would say, okay, at least I did a block. Next time or tomorrow, I'm going to do a block and a little bit more, but never less. And I start to then pick up my speed, my walking speed, and I start to attempt to jog it. And sure enough, I start to jog a block, and then a block and a half. Then that became three blocks, and three blocks became six. And in no time, I started to run a mile, and then the two miles, and my weight started to go down, and my toning started to 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 show, and my food intake was was less and less, and I began began to eat a lot healthier. But I really did follow the formula type technique that we have on weight management on how to reduce weight using the mirror of the mind. I started to imagine the way I really wanted to look you know, as, as my goal, and I started to get into the experience of being thin, healthy, and fit. And I did that, and I kept that in my mind all the time, especially when I was tempted to eat something that was not part of my good nutritional intake. I would picture myself first, how I wanted to look and how I wanted to feel before I actually went out and grabbed that extra chocolate or cupcake or unhealthy food. Uh, I never, I never um, kept myself from eating what I wanted, but I always went for little portions instead of a full portion. Now, the tricks that I utilized for me that worked was that I reframed my idea about food. I thought food is my medicine. Exercise is my medicine. That's what's going to keep me strong, fit, and healthy. And the other thing too is, of course, I had that really strong goal in my mind about being back on stage and delivering you know, my, my lectures with a silver method. But I reframed the, my thought about food. I also knew that food could be very tasty and healthy as well. I decided to eat like maybe 80% of vegetables and all things that were healthy and, um, and, and that I could purchase myself that were not uh, prepackaged foods. I, I cooked myself as well, but I, I ate about maybe 80% of vegetables and I had maybe about maybe 20% of proteins and things of that type. So I would first eat up on the vegetables and then would also, of course, have the proteins. I always served myself less on my plates I never really went for the, the, the sweet type of dessert. I went for healthy desserts instead. But the things that really worked for me was that I served myself less. I always rem reminded myself that I don't have to eat everything. I always pull away from food or from the table when I'm, I'm about maybe 60% comfortable with my food intake instead of 100% full. I eat, I learned, I trained myself to eat slowly enjoy my conversation, enjoy the fluids that I was I was taking, like drinking plenty of water, but I chewed my, my food very, very, very well. I chewed my food to a pulp. I ate slowly and I pulled away at about 60% comfortable, never ate to be full. Now, I like to eat throughout the day, so I usually do grab a little bite here or there, maybe a piece of cheese or some, you know, carrot or something that I might want to take, and I'll eat a little bit as, I, as I'm hungry, basically, as I need to or want to, but never really for cravings and things of that stuff. You know, I just kind of overcame that. Um, but for me, those are the very things that help a lot. Pull away from the table, eat at 60% full, chew your food to a pulp, and eat very slowly. Now we know that if you tend to overeat, I mean, if you tend to put too much food on your plate and eat everything on your plate and you eat fast, you tend to overeat. So train yourself, force yourself to, to, to eat slowly, chew your food really well, drink plenty of fluids and pull away from the table when you're about 60% full. And if you need more food after that, by all means, have it. Don't deprive yourself of anything, but when you do take it, just take a little bit and learn how to savor your food as you as you as you put it into your mouth. You know, really enjoy the smell, enjoy the flavor, the texture. I mean, really get into it, but take your time. Being a very conscious eater, 
and really and move more. I mean, you don't have to go into this big old exercise regime, but do learn to move more as you are reducing your food intake. We all know that. It's going to take about maybe 1,200 calories, you know, to keep yourself at your ideal weight or to reduce your weight. So enjoy that to the best of your ability. I hope this idea or these kind of tools really do help in you moving towards your, your ideal weight and size. And remember, health is the best, best thing that we can always strive for and aim for. My aunt just passed away over 100 years old. And I was just so amazed. She, she told everybody, you know, on, uh, uh, she told everyone on Wednesday, she said, call everyone because I'm leaving on Friday. And she was about 103 months. And she says, I'm leaving on Friday. And she was perfectly healthy. So I want everyone to come over here and I want to say goodbye to everyone. And so sure enough, the whole family, everyone went to go see her by her bedside. And she said bye to everyone. And they all shared a lot of love. And then on Friday, she just went to sleep. And just yesterday, which was yesterday was Sunday, she made her transition. I think she was already mostly gone. But everybody celebrated her life of health and energy and strength. And it was pretty amazing. And she chose when to go. I want to choose when to go when it's my time. And I know that I'm ready to go on to my next adventure. But I want to choose when to go. And when I go, I want to go in perfect health. Now, I hope you join me on this challenge. I don't want to call it a challenge. And I am challenging you to let's make up our mind that we're going to live a long, healthy, strong, vibrant life that we're going to choose when we want to go and we are going to make our transition in perfect health. Now, I really want this for you. I want this to be the most amazing goal that you can aim for and strive for. To, to have a vibrant and thriving life, one with joy and happiness, filled with love and abundance, and yes, above all, health. I love you guys. I hope this helps, and come on, let's get healthy, and let's make it happen, and summertime is the best time to do it, okay? See you later. Bye.